And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's Talk Hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's Talk Hookup right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app on the Mightier 1090. Uh, Pete Gray here along with Corey Sandin. Ricky's uh, down at Palmas de Cortez, and uh, we'll be back next weekend. But we have great guests here. Captain Mike Pritchard from the Tribute is here, and uh, what a great prize he's brought with us, too, today. Right? Isn't that cool? I mean, a day-and-a-half trip for yeah. anybody that's calling in today at... Uh, 213-432-1090. I give you the number, but the lines are full. Yeah, but that uh, day and a half trip to be used uh, before the end of June. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't ask for a better deal. And yeah. you can get through anytime via the Let's Talk Hookup app or just text the show and uh, we'll try and get to We've had a bunch of texts. Uh, we'll try and get to as many phone calls and texts during this hour. But uh, <clears throat> a lot of fun having Mike here. It and, is. Uh, totally literally cool. just stepped off the boat this morning at 530 and uh, came into our uh, world headquarters here. Yep. Yeah. A lot, a lot going on at the landing is, today, man. man. I saw the Royal Star pulling just, in. Just pulled in, and uh, yeah, the Shogun's unloading now. Royal Star. Fisherman's so, so the, Processing, the Sean. Who we heard from Bill over there. Yeah, Fisherman's Processing is back in gear now. Congratulations, Sean. We're going to hear from him later on in the show and about uh, about the new facility and all that, that that's going on there. And uh, um, anyway, an interesting text here, which is the, the, the age-old question. Uh, generally speaking, is your, in your opinion, is the full moon or new moon more productive on a day and a half trip? That's from Tom in San Diego. Uh, it's, it's always everybody always asks that question, so we have to just get it out. It's uh-huh. like a loaded question no, and, for you, and it's a good question. I'll let you know at the end of the day. There yeah, it is. exactly. Because <laughs> it, it can be yes or no. Right? I've seen, and you know what? I especially uh, earlier on running charter boats. Um, Ran, ran the international start for years, the uh, cat special at Coral Sea. And you have a lot of your charter groups say, oh, hang on, I, I need to look at the moon phase. Yeah. And I've seen fish bite every day for a month, regardless of moon phase. I've seen them not bite every day for a month or months, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I, I personally think it, it'll affect the time of day that fish seem to bite. I think you see more night bites and early morning bites. And this, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. You see a lot more gray bites, early morning bites, and then it seems like you'll have a midday lull and they'll bite again uh, late in the afternoon mm-hmm. just due to the fact that it seems like they're feeding at night. I mean, yeah. that's that's been my personal opinion on it, um, but I've also seen that completely get thrown the out opposite. the window. Yeah. yeah, I mean, sometimes they bite all day. Sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. Um, you know, I had one of my crew members last night asking him, why is the current so bad? I, it, I know it's, uh, you know, lunar related, but as far as why at, at you know, any given time. And I, what I always thought was funny, especially with um, is sometimes it seems like everything's against you. You're, you're going south and the current's going north at night. And then the yeah. next day on the way home, the current's going south. <laughs> Yeah, And I, I think that fishing is like that, too. I mean, you can try your best to predict, you know, around moon phase. And I've seen it backfire as many times as I've seen it work. But I think but, that that's what I'm sorry, Pete, but I think that's what kind of when you love the ocean, that's what makes it entertaining. That's what makes it exciting. That's I mean, the the variables that change and you trying to figure it out. Oh, yeah, yeah you would you would <laughs> yeah. love to have it perfectly lined up every time. But. For you to be able to figure it out for the conditions given is the challenge at hand. Oh man, you know? it's it, well, like we're relating bluefin and, and sea bass, and I, I think it's funny, and I'll probably get some slack for this, but we had a passenger yesterday who said they made bluefin, white sea bass, and women all in the same day. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm staying out of that one. <laughs> hey, yeah, it keeps it but, interesting. But tonight. here's the interesting twist on that. Okay, yesterday, day before. Pretty slack tides, not the full, no, uh, the week before the full moon, uh, kind of the off the moon, but still a lot of, a lot of current. So how do you, re- I mean, you, I, I, I mean, it's it, currents related to the moon, but, uh, but it's not the full moon. It's actually slack kind of everything. And, and then you get the king tides. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's out of my price range. I, yeah. I, me too. I can't answer that. Yeah. One. <laughs> I, 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 can anybody answer that I, one? Yeah. Well, it was just like the the question earlier uh, about the giant squid. I 
I don't know where they are. I don't know why they're gone. Yeah. They, I hope they come back at one point or another. And, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. It, it, it's, 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 out the of my, ocean. it's out of my pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the ocean's an amazing place. And that's why we love it so yep. much, for sure. Hey, let's go ahead and jump into the phones. Let's do it, Pete. Let's talk to Doug. Our good friend from Montebello. Good morning, Doug. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, Doug. Good morning, Doug. Yeah, I was wondering on uh, on a meter mark on a tuna right now, how long will you sit on it or decide, or decide to leave? Man, you know, that that all depends, too. We sat on uh, the same school yesterday. Actually, it was several different schools that, that came through us. We uh, had one drift for about four and a half hours. And it's one of those things, especially with other boats around, you, you try to do your best to look and see what everybody else is doing and when you you're looking at 15 boats driving around for an hour and you're getting ready to leave and then you see a couple of fish marks swim under the boat you know we we actually sat through and we i think we probably had more bites uh midday ish than um most of the other boats did which unfortunately we lost but it, it man if you don't get bit right away a lot of skippers and i, I do it uh too or you get impatient and you want to leave um, especially with bluefin, sometimes you'll get that initial stop where they'll boil up really good, and then you see nothing. And I don't know how many times and this applies to every skipper I know. You, all of a sudden, okay, guys, let's go and wind them on up. We're going to go look. And, and you put them in gear, you start driving, and then you drive right over the top of them. So sometimes it pays to sit them out. Um, being impatient with bluefin fishing and leaving a, a, a stop early um, usually backfires on you one way or another. And there's nothing worse than getting one shot. You have one shot in the morning to sit on a spot and get it to let, let it build up around you and maybe pick at those fish. You get impatient and leave, and then you don't stop the boat for the next six hours, and you watch the guys who sat it out sit there and start plunking away. I mean, it's one of the things that will always tear at a skipper. I mean, yeah. It's when. When do you go? Yeah. Is it time? You start hearing people on deck. Well, this, you know, we, we should have left ten minutes ago. We haven't got any bites, and then, you know, you, sometimes it gets to you. You put it in gear, you drive away, and then the guy that sat there for two hours plunks away twenty of them. Yeah, it, it's a it's a hard one. Yeah, and th- there's been so much. Fortunately, there's been so much bluefin tuna around in in the prime months that you were able to get on a lot of other schools too. But the same situation, you get on a school, is it going to bite or not? Right. You, some of that stuff um, uh, just inside of Cortez last year, there was so much bluefin around, and a lot of it was evening bite. You know, yo or uh, sinker fishing, flatfall fishing, stuff like that, yo-yo jigs. And you're looking at, you know, 25 boats all down swell of you, and everybody's stopping on fish. And then you have that one spot that you stop on, and it leaves blank screen, nothing on the meter. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, if we drift along here long enough, you're going to have to get more schools coming through you. And sometimes that doesn't work either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they moved. Yeah. They, so have, they, have, they swim. It really depends on the type of fishing you're doing. If you're fishing... Uh, albacore and you're getting you know a jig shark and a couple of bait fish and that's just the way it is you get your your jig fish your bait fish you run up to the wheelhouse put them in gear and you get on to the next one sometimes it doesn't matter how long you sit albacore schools are smaller schools than <clears throat> bluefin or yellowfin in general yeah i mean yeah. we've seen some stupid days a thousand albacore fish days um back back when they were here but yeah uh in general you don't you know a big school of albacore i, I think you, when you see it on the machines you're talking like 50 fish you're looking at the bluefin. You're talking about thousands of fish. Thousands of fish. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Cool. All right, Doug, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's talk to Darren. Darren, call from Menifee. Thanks for joining us this morning, Darren. I'm heading down to the Fisherman's Landing sale right now. So Great. So for Mike, uh, what size flat falls for a day and a half for the glow and dark? And for Corey, uh, are the calicos hitting the weedless yet? And what are your favorite current colors? Go for it, Mike. What uh, the size I, of flat I, You know what? I, I'd bring everything. Same, same kind of deal like we were talking about earlier. Um, I, I first mentioned that uh, my cook was the first one to get bit yesterday. And oddly enough, uh, something old school that came comes from uh, Kenny Mochizuki, a guy up in Oxnard that a well, great well jig uh, A Chrome 6X Junior, which is a very small grade. I mean, you know, con- consider uh, compared to a flat fall. Um, anything on up to, I don't know, what's the bigger flat fall now? I, I, I don't know. This, I mean, they're, they're pretty darn heavy. They're the, larger flat falls. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like 250 to yeah, 300. 
It, yeah, I think yeah, it's that's a, a big one. So, and then something, especially, and it got kind of kind of comical here a couple of years ago. What some of the guys were doing with those giant flat falls, the, the three hundred gram, um, as far as adding numerous extra hooks to them, but they're getting bit. And if you're fishing, especially early in the morning like that, and you're fishing heavy line, you know, the bigger the better. Uh, especially if it's breezy, you can get that jig down quickly. They do sink great. They sink somehow just like a torpedo weight and still get bit. But uh, I just you want to bring anything that you're going to fish from, uh, say, 40 or 50 pound on up to 130 pound. Yeah. And take a look at that new Sea Falcon, too. Those are pretty cool jigs. And, and they have a variety of shapes and sizes and, 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 and the way that they fall and stuff like that. Do they're, they have a fisherman's yet? <clears throat> I believe they do. Yeah, oh, okay. they were supposed to get them in. So. Well, Darren's on his way down. Yeah, you get yeah. your, your three, and, three and one hook yeah. set, and you can buy some jigs. There you go. And, and how, many hooks is, how many hooks are, are, are the right amount of hooks? Same thing on fishing, but I, um, even, even before this trip, I just, uh, have extras for, you know, passengers on the boat. And yeah. it, it sounds crazy, but we do have passengers get on the boat without line or hooks. Yeah. It still blows me away every time, but, but you uh, have it on the boat. You're, you're going to want to bring at least like, uh, I'd say 15 to 20 of each hook size that you might be using. All right. Um, if, if they're biting tangles and everything else, but you know, and it's, uh, you know, how, how much time do you want to spend digging your, your hook out of a tangle or out of a fish? So yeah. sometimes cutting that baby off and moving on is, is your best bet. So, um, you know, d- don't overwhelm yourself, but bring lots. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thanks and, a lot for and, the phone. And the weedless uh, fishing was out twice this last week, Darren, and, and there was actually a good amount of bites to be had. Okay. I only had a handful of fish. I was using a larger weed list, and there was a lot of, like, uh, 13 to 15-inch fish oh, trying, to, okay. trying to inhale the 7-inch yeah. weed list. You know? Yeah. And, yeah, and, and using bait fish colors. It's happening. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's happening, but it's, you know, it's if early. I was using the 5-inch, we probably would have had 30 or 40 fish. Yeah, but you, you were know? looking for a big one. Yeah, I was trying to catch a 5- to 7-pounder. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Uh, interesting question. What are the prime months for bluefin? Uh <laughs> Is, is 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 there a prime month for bluefin? I mean, it, what what month is it? Today's it's April, right? April now, yeah. <laughs> so there's blue, bluefin here now. You know what? Right, there's been some really good bluefin fishing lately. Um, you know, some of our boats out of uh, Seaforth have had very very good fishing recently. Um, and it, it it varies, and it's a typical bluefin. I mean, now you know, on right? Yep, for anywhere from now until January. Yeah. And uh, I mean, some of the prime months last year were May, June, I believe. May and June, June uh, yeah. last year. And then uh, same thing, November and December were, were yeah, great. Were fantastic. So it's, yeah. uh, it, you know, it, it depends. If you want to throw some other fish into the mix, and if you're doing a, a day and a half or a multi-day trip, um, our bluefin fishing has been, it's been pretty much year round. Yeah. So if you want to add to that, maybe, uh, you know, you, you pick a late summer two day, two and a half day or something like that. And we had some very, very good fishing uh, during that time period where we'd go out, even on day and a half trips, you go out and knock out, say, limits of yellowfin, uh, maybe a couple yellowtail, and then you, you spend the afternoon trying to catch a big big bluefin. That was a pretty common uh, a routine during the summer. So so the time of the year, you could add a, a mix to that bluefin. Well, and, and right saying. now yeah. it'd be um, like uh, Andrew, you kelp yellows, you know? Andrew and Allie are, uh, uh, last week had um, you know decent bluefin fishing, but they had great yellowtail to go with it. And yesterday, I mean, we spent 80% of our day fishing bluefin, and then we kind of knocked the crud out of the yellowtail. So, Dude, which is nothing, really fun. There, yeah. There's nothing more exciting than, than throwing a, a braille of bait on a kelp and, and everybody going bendo. Oh, know? yeah. No, no. And then I was, you know, like I said, after hours and hours of fishing bluefin yesterday, right? it was such a nice change of pace to you slide up on a kelp and you're a fresh one. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And so decent sized right? fish, you yeah, know? That's, that's nice grade of fish. Yeah, so, I missed that. And that, that'd be a big part of it, you know, as far as bluefin. Anywhere from, you know, two weeks ago on a, up until the end of the year, I, I'd say is, uh, and, and a lot of it's weather pending. But if you want to, you know, incorporate some other fish into it, depending on what, whether it's going to be yellowfin, dorado, yellowtail, um, that'd be my uh, my way to pick, you know, it any is. time of year. Yeah, that's a good one for sure. All right. Well, fo- hey, look who's here. It's your saltwater guide with the fishdope.com. Report Captain Dave Hansen, right, Rory? The Cats Report is sponsored by the Fish Pros of Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Not, not only do they offer the best processing for your fish when your trip returns to the San Diego landings, as well as your private boat catch. Now with Fish Pros, the market, you can purchase fresh fish, smoked and jerky fish, spices, rubs, smoked cheese, and their famous tuna burgers, along with their amazing poke kit. 
Call for details or order online at fishermansprocessing.com. And I know he's getting back online. And good morning, your saltwater guy, Dave Hansen. Good morning. Good morning, Mike, Corey, Dave. Pete. Thanks for having Mike. me on the show today. Thanks for being here. Mike, how cool is that to have that yellowtail? That is a blessing because we know how long those days can be in between schools of bluefin. And then to have that yellowtail, that's a blessing. That's a big deal. Wait, Mike's like making it. it sound pretty cool. I wish I was down there catching some of that yellowtail. But, um, gang, Brian Woolley touched on it. Me and Pete touched on it last week. Gang, look at the fish count. Dana Wharf Sport Fishing had 830 fish caught yesterday. You can relate that right back to the anchovy. It's super cool to catch fish. We'd love to all catch 200-pound bluefin every time, except Corey and I, but everybody else would love to catch 200-pound bluefin every time. But you know what's really cool? Catching fish. And like Corey said, he's like me. Catching a crappie or catching a trout or catching a calico bass, it's just fun to catch fish. And when you throw anchovies in the mix, it changes the whole world. Guys that took that anchovy over to Catalina had epic bonita fishing. Lots and lots of bonita on the front side of Catalina, up and down the front side. It didn't really matter. Guys fishing on the coast took that anchovy on the edges of the kelp from anywhere from down in your neck of the woods, Pete, green tanks, five tanks, up to... La Jolla kelp, you throw that ancho, you braille a scoop of that choby on the edge of the kelp, cal- calico bass were cartwheeling out of the water in 60 degree, 61 degree water. It, it matters. That anchovy changes the whole thing. That's what I'm talking about right there, man. You're right. That choby just adds a whole different chemistry and, and yeah. a whole different cycle. And, and, and it brings in uh, those that remember from back in the day, uh, brown bait. You know, yeah. add oh my some, goodness. Uh, Tom Cotton, <laughs> queen fish trout. to the mix. Hey, hello. So what do you think, Dave? Are we going to, with anchovies so prevalent, are we going to see the A-word, the albacore? Well, like Michael tell you and Frank, anybody that's ever fished albacore, it sure would be nice to have anchovies in the bait tank because I think it's going to be hard to get an albacore to choke down a seven-inch sardine. They kind of like to eat those anchovies. So it would be really a blessing to have some anchovies in the tank if that fish does show up. But who knows? Like Mike said, we're in a weird cycle this last seven years with this bluefin. So you can, like Lasley tells me all the time, throw all the books in the trash because nothing makes any sense anymore to any of us that have been doing this for more than an hour. Yeah. (laughs) It's all You know, nothing. (laughs) Look at last year. The wind would blow 30 knots. And we'd all go out there going, okay, it's over. We go out there, and it's the best it's ever been. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It just is the weirdest thing. But like uh, um, Gundy was saying, halibut, halibut, halibut. I don't know, Corey, but I sure do love fishing halibut on anchovies. It just oh, yeah. makes – it's a one bite. You don't have to let them eat it, eat it, eat it. They come up, they'll scarf it down. They'll scarf So, yeah, anchovies are my buddy. Those are my pals. I'll drive a long ways to get a tank of chovy. Yeah. And there's nothing more fun, like you said, in the kelp line. And, and having a private boat and picking up a scoop of anchovy and just throwing a few out there. And even if you're an artificial enthusiast, you know, to be able to, to throw a few here and a few there. And, you know, something I've noticed, too, uh, Dave, uh, is a lack of really weird, but a lack of seals or sea lions on me in the kelp. Shh. Which... Yeah, seriously, I have. You know, I be, maybe I jinxed myself now. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I hope, they're, hope they'll stay here. Oh yeah, yeah. They're, but they're maybe following. They're uh, well, I, they're I following the sport boats, me. Corey. That's why you're not seeing them. They're all behind the San Diego and yeah. behind the <laughs> well, Sea Fort. I, I, and... I can tell you, they're definitely at the Coronado Islands. <laughs> like, like, last time I was like, there. I'm sorry, <laughs> Bug, but thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, fishdope.com yeah. has all the information. Thanks to Dave and Mark and all the great guys that report and uh, a lot of field reporters out there. Twenty bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code Hookup Now. Lowercase, no space. Hookup Now is your twenty dollar code and. Captain Dave, how do we find you? Well, Pete, first of all, Dad's doing way better, so let everyone know. Pops is feeling really much, much better, doing good. I know he's listening right now, so there's good news on that front. And if you guys want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me at YourSaltWaterGuy.com. We'll teach you how to fish with those anchovies because here's what I see every time a guy pulls up to the bait barge on his private boat and sees anchovies in there the minute the first thing he does is sit down on the gunnel and start sucking his thumb because he doesn't know how he's going to cast them. <laughs> Guys, anchovies, 
are the that saying you can like Corey said throw a handful of chobie in the water and then throw your pla- throw your uh, MC swim bait right after that and watch hang on oh mm-hmm. yeah there you go hey thanks Dave appreciate that report and we'll talk to you next Sunday all right guys talk to you next Sunday bye all right appreciate yeah. that phones are packed I let's know. jump into it Corey. Captain Dave get me all yeah, fired, fired up fired let's up on let's that. talk to John John from San Diego thanks for joining us this morning John. Good morning, guys. I wanted to ask Captain Mike um, what he prefers in terms of length of top shots for his passengers and if that length varies from, uh, you know, for instance, a 25-pound line size to an 80-pound line size. That's a good question. You know, and and a lot of it depends on what you're fishing, uh, conditions that you're fishing in, wind, um, size of bait, and everything else. Hey. Uh, for for most uh, cases, especially if you're fishing with a big group of guys, um, yeah, you want to have enough of a top shot to where you're going to be able to cut it a few times. If whether it's fish, uh, you know, uh, fish chewing up your line or, or tangle, uh, I'd say in most cases, I'd say somewhere around 20 yards. Um, if you're fishing a small boat by yourself, I mean, I'd, I I get down to the uh, where you're fishing just a few feet of it, enough to matter. Um, fly lining, especially now that we're talking about anchovies, which all kinds of fond memories and Ooh. most of it didn't involve spectra, but trying to fly line a small bait like that, you want a, as little drag on it as possible. And, you know, it, it's just the small diameter of fishing spectra and a little, a uh, little teeny leader, you know, you, you call her hook an anchovy, you whip it out there and you see it swim through the water with no problem, as opposed to, you know, try a uh, fly line at an anchovy on straight 25 pound where, after a while, it's it's really a lot of work for that thing to swim that you know to swim the line around and it's dragging it backwards. So, um, I I love fishing a small top shot uh, as small as possible usually, whether it's fishing bass or anything else. But um, on an open party boat, when you're fishing with a group of guys, I'd say enough to where you you have a, a you know you, you can cut a good 10, 15 feet off after you know throughout the day before you have to change out your top shot. Um, if you get a fish that swallows it or whatever, you don't want to have to come up and, um, you know, you cut your hook off and have to put on a new top shot. You want to give yourself a little bit of room. Um, that being said, like I said, it depends on weather conditions, bait size and everything else. Uh, yeah. that, like we were talking about earlier, the innovation of spectra has changed everything. And, you know, if we do start seeing a lot more anchovy, you're going to realize how, how nice it is to fly line 30 pound spectra instead of 30 pound uh, mono. Mono, yeah, no question. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Uh, and uh, this uh, text from Ken and Chula Vista just say, he wants to give a shout out to Vince over at Fisherman's Landing Tackle. He just helped me spend 441 bucks. Got a new Graftech rod, Shimano rig, Flatfall, Nomad Minnow, Olakai flip flops, all on sale. So, that, yeah, that's a pretty good that's, deal. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Um, and the, that sale's going on still at Fisherman's Landing through uh, at least through, 6 o'clock Through tonight. the day, and that's what Doug through was saying day. yesterday. Yeah. You, know, at, you know, at 6 o'clock, I think they close maybe at 7 possibly, but it's whenever the last uh, chance. So that, that closing time is variable. I get down there ASAP. Yeah, for real. Indeed. Yeah. Let's go ahead and jump back Let's in the phone. Let's do it. How about Don? Don from Woodland Hills. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Cook Up this morning, Don. Hey, guys. Good morning. Hey, um... <clears throat> Peter, a comment and then a question for Mike. Um, you know, with all the, the dialogue here about, you know, the bluefin tuna getting bigger each year, might be a good idea to get Dr. Barbara Block back on just to kind of see at what her research has been showing over the last couple of years. That's a good idea, And then, um, you know, um, Mike, you know, with a, with a, it's really great hearing about, you know, some of, the, some of the older boats and the passion that Bill Poole had, you know, building them and, and the succession of boats that he, that he put, produced. Um, what kind of maintenance do you have to do on a, on a two-inch plank hull? You know, it, it's funny because the, the planks themselves will probably last the, the test of time. Um, a lot of it is, is fasteners. Um, we do fastener inspections. Uh, Coast Guard uh, requires it also uh, every few years. <clears throat> but w- with especially with mahogany planks, actually any wood soaked in salt water, I mean, it's basically preserved forever. The, the biggest um, issue that you might find is using fresh water on a boat. You start getting dry rot. We only use fresh water to rinse our windows and r- rinse our rods and reels off. Everything else is salt water. Uh, that's something uh, 
Be- between uh, Sal, uh, he's one of our woodworkers, uh, Steve Russo, one of their biggest things when they start talking about wood boats, especially plywood boats, is no fresh water. I mean, fresh water and wood do not do well together. Causes salt water, rot, right? Yeah, I mean, as long as that thing stays in salt water, it's, it's good forever. I mean, you look at some of these boats. Old boats uh, built in the 1800s. I know the Estrella up in Oxnard was decommissioned years ago. And I don't think that's so much because of the, the wood planking. It's uh, As long as you stay on top of your fasteners and your maintenance, you should be good to go. Um, salt water and uh, whether it's silicon bronze, any kind of metal in the water, you're going to have uh, a little bit of electrolysis. So uh, we go through our fasteners and change them out uh, every few years. We do... Um, checks with the coast guard where you might have to pull a few fasteners and as long as they look good you know you, you keep going but uh we redid our our uh complete bow um uh was it four years ago and even just this year we had sell uh our, our woodworker come down and, and beef up our our bow he, he sistered up some of the frames i think we had like 400 pounds of new mahogany in, in, into our four peak which Whoa, is just pretty crazy yeah i like gold, gold. oh yeah. man and, and, and it is and having some of these woodworkers uh these shipwrights that are slowly uh you know retiring and going yeah. away it's it's, a, it's gonna be a lost art it's an art yeah and saul's like one of the best oh man he gets an amazing there. guy oh yeah He's, he always wants to talk about italy and how boats were made back there but I, I think I've been working with Sal for uh, oh, 25 years, maybe. Wow. And it's he calls me Mark. He's never got my name right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I use him every year, but he, yeah. Hey, yeah. he's got the right work going. You have to call, yeah. call me whatever Bring you want. Yeah. But Just t- taking care of it, um, you know, no, no fresh water and staying on top of your 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 zincs, your uh, your maintenance, your fasteners is, is key it's for key. taking care of these boats. You look at... Um, you know, bugger who has basically the same hole, same boat, and it's, you know, if you're not doing maintenance on them, then there's something wrong. Yeah. They're, sure. they're great boats. Yeah. All right. Hey, you're listening to Southern Thank California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090. Your vacation bucket list can't be completed without visiting the Katmai Lodge, Alaska this summer. A world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. Get in the action fishing for all five species of Pacific salmon. King, sockeye, chum, coho, plus trophy-sized rainbow trout, arctic grayling, and dolly varden. Both in the Alagnac and nearby waters. Katmai Lodge's Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fly fishing fanatics and no how to help you reel them in, ensuring your days are fish-filled while you enjoy freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, enjoy fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon. Delicious dinner prepared by the lodge's exceptional chef. Take a quick fly-out trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world-renowned bear watching. And check out our trout fishing specials at katmai.com. That's K-A-T-M-A-I.com. Katmai.com. It's a fact. Shimano produces some of the finest fishing reels for our Southern California sport fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. We have a complete selection of Shimano saltwater reels like Talica, Speedmaster, Trinidad, Torium, and Tranks reels. Plus, we have all the best Shimano lures like Flatfall, Cold Sniper, and Orca. Our professional saltwater experts at Fisherman's Landing Tackle have the know-how to help you choose the right Shimano product for your next trip. When it comes to Shimano gear, you owe it to yourself to visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego or on the web at saltwatertackle.com. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Our hard-working crew will maximize your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trips, the best charter boats available, and our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service sport fishing operation offering great half day full day and open party trips book online at fisherman'slanding.com i'll see you at fisherman's landing in san diego all of us at the american angler family want to express appreciation to our regular passengers that fish with us year after year and to the new anglers that came out this last season we realize how precious your vacation time is and we are truly grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us it's important that your experience is memorable from the moment you call the office to the time you step off the boat hi i'm Lori. call me at the office 619-223-5414 or check us out at americananglersportfishing.com come fishing with the american angler family and make a memory Hey anglers, AFCO Pro Captain Ben Florentino of Coastal Charters here. As a full-time guide, I'm on the water all year long. It's my livelihood. Having the right clothing is of the utmost importance to staying warm, dry, cool, and comfortable to endure whatever the Pacific wants to throw at me. 
Thankfully, I'm equipped with AFCO clothing to keep me dialed season after season. Do yourself a favor and check out AFCO's award-winning gear at a dealer near you or learn more at AFCO.com. Hi, this is Scott Sherman for Snap Insurance. I'm back from City Hall and ready to help you with all your insurance needs. I can provide you with the best in boat insurance at the lowest rates. But there's more to a policy than just a low rate. I know the coverage you need and will make sure your boat and property are covered right. Work with us to wrap your home, auto, and boat policy to save even more money. We can also help you with your commercial or business insurance. Call me, Scott Sherman, at Snap Insurance, 619-908-3100 or snapins.com. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charter is much more than great fishing. They also do incredible Guadalupe white shark diving trips, as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips. Check out islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to one and one half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. All right. Good morning. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. We've got Mike in studio, and lines are full, but you can give us a shout, 213-432-1090. That's uh, your chance to win a day and a half trip on, on the, the tribute. tribute. Yeah. yeah. Through through June. now through June. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for that, Mike. Hey, uh, a, a text from Brandon in San Pedro. First time texter, and he just downloaded the app. And uh, when he's away from the radio, he loves the app. So question is, I know you guys mentioned that Bluefin are getting bigger and bigger. With that being said, does the tribute provide heavier gear if you don't have the necessary gear to land those three and 400-pound tuna? Well, hopefully, if you're getting a three or four hundred pounder, it's coming on the kite. And <laughs> yes, we we do provide our, our kite gear. Yeah, I have a very good selection of uh, heavy gear, all fifty wides, um, fishing straight two to three hundred pound gear. Um, our landing does have a very good uh, array of rental gear as well. Yes. So, if, if two speed gear, and if you're under gun, um, depending on what you have, you want to give the landing a call. And I, I got to say, our, our Landing does a very good job servicing our, our rental gear. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, and I believe they have like a package too, like a long, like a like a multi day big tuna package where you just get like the proper rods and reels. Yes, that you and, can and rent. it's been built uh, in the same um, kind of deal. We were slightly caught off guard when this big bluefin started yeah. biting years ago, and our heaviest gear was a sixty pound setup. Yeah, that's no longer the case. So yeah, you can get uh, heavy uh, two speed packages. Yeah, uh, like Shimano Talicas and yep. yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, no, no, it's and, and well served. Uh, yeah, always fresh line, specter backing on them. Um, so depending on how heavy a, a rig you're looking for, but if if you're fishing the kite, uh, yes, we do um, have uh, you know gear that it is. We'll let you use your gear if it's appropriate, but we figure if if you're on the kite, then we're going to be supplying the gear for you. It's there you perfect. go. All, All right. right, very good. Let's jump in the phones. Let's talk to Tom. Tom mm-hmm. calling from Temecula this morning. Good morning, Tom. Welcome to the show. Great show. Great boat, uh, Mike. Fished it uh, several times every year, I think. And uh, anyway, I have a couple questions. Um, first one is, um, provided you know we end up having a lot of anchovies, uh, what would, how would the uh, bluefin react to it? And I know it'd be a, a different scenario completely. Would that also drive people to using more flat balls and jigs? And then my uh, second question is, if you had your choice of schools to stop on, uh, what size of bluefin would you really want to stop on? <laughs> Good question. You know what? I, I'm still a big fan of the uh, 30 to 60-pound bluefin, I, I think, are, are probably among my favorites. They're, they're plenty big enough to pull on. They're, you know, you, you, you get a limit of 50-pound you know, bluefin. That's still plenty of meat to take home. They don't absolutely ruin you like some of these bigger ones do. Yeah. Um, your hook-land ratio is much, much better. Uh, the big ones are great, and we've had some very, very good bluefin fishing over the years. Uh, even on some of the bigger ones, I remember, uh, I, I guess it was a couple of years ago in November, right around Thanksgiving, we're fishing the, the 60 on the anchor, and we just knocking the crud out of the, like, the uh, 60 to 120-pounders, which was fun. But it, it, it depends. I mean, if you have the appropriate tackle... Um, Fish up to about a hundred pounds are fun. 
fish over 100 pounds, I think, uh, like Corey was talking about. Work. It, it becomes such, like, th- that fish that we hooked yesterday was probably just over 200 pounds. We had, I think, five different people pull on oh. a, on a kite rod with 200 pound. And you just, you want to. what happened? We pulled the hook? We pulled the hook, yeah, oh. probably about 50 feet from the boat. Oh, it was a ni- nice fish. But you, you see the frustration on somebody's face. In low gear, when that rod's loaded up, there's. 30 pounds of drag on it, and you can't do anything. Yeah. It's, you know, borderline getting the rod jerked out of Because you're not going to – it's pretty hard to break 200-pound test. <laughs> it's – it's a you know what? When – as long as I fish long range, and back then, you know, fishing 100-pound was heavy. Yeah. You know, and even then, you'd, you'd be running up to the bow of somebody's rod, and they'd have 24 pounds of drag on it or something. And all of a sudden, you're like, that, this thing might actually get ripped out of my hands. Now you're talking about a different league where you're fishing over 30 pounds of drag, and you're, cool. that thing starts running, and you're like, it's it's like hanging on to an anchor rope as the yeah. boat's driving away. <laughs> like, yeah, crazy. <laughs> Hang on. So that um, I, I still prefer a little bit smaller grade fish. It, it's it's fun for the the masses kind of yeah. thing, you know. Yeah, they're catchable. You know, there's usually more fish in a school. They get fired and charged up and it, we're fishing you know our, our a good load on our boat our limited you know we're fishing with 30 people 32 people and i want to see everybody catch some fish everybody yeah, go home with a fish catching one 200 pounder is awesome for that one guy um but getting on a school of that that mid-grade uh bluefin and you know having a boil up and looking up the side and you got 15 or 20 of them going that that for me is is yeah. what i want to do and, and and like for example yesterday you had that great yellowtail fishing and i i, I bet you saw a lot of smiles on the faces oh yeah no, no, a complete game changer yeah. and, and that's the same same thing where you look up the side and every rod up the up the side of the boat's bit and there's fish flying over the yeah. side people yelling for gaff full speed that is what my my boat's basically built around yeah. is you know you're fishing with groups of people and i we i really like the one day trips as we get rolling into the summer and you know yellowfin tuna fishing dorado yellowtail um nothing ho- better ho- right? hopefully some yeah. albacore yeah it's yeah. gonna happen again you someday. never know yeah but that you know where everybody goes home with with some fish everybody's happy everybody gets to pull on a fish um th- these big bluefin are great um and we we do plenty of trips where that's all we do um but it, it, in general i'd like to see everybody go home with some fish i'll and say that's this what no. happened yesterday which is awesome i'll yeah. say this there's nothing better eating than a nice chunk of bluefin you know it's, i mean it is especially I, like we we're talking about straight out of the rsw yeah oh blood my. yeah taken care of Process, seared, fisherman's processing. yeah oh, seared man. or with the fisherman's processing poke kid oh, or, oh, you boy. know there's i can think about three ways right now it's I'm all like, good it. yellow pokies <clears throat> well, what, what was your first question tom anchovies Oh, the anchovies. Okay, we got the anchovies. That. Anchovies and bluefin. I, I think with the innovation of, of a lot of these jigs is going to be a, a, a huge game changer. Yeah. Back in the day, um, and I, I never got to fish real big bluefin with anchovies because, well, it was pretty much, I think that was, what, a mid-80s deal? Uh-huh. Yeah, and I wasn't down here then. But trying to fly line even a big anchovy and try to catch a you know 150 pound bluefin on it is something I don't want to do. Yeah, I mean I I can't imagine. I'm trying to visualize that challenge, and it's it's uh, a challenge. I mean that's trying to heavy string with with With, a five inch anchovy just isn't an easy deal. No, even back in the 90s, like when we're you know you'd have to fly line one on 25 pound, you'd hook a 40 pound bluefin, and that. Is like pulling on a 150 pounder now. Yeah, right? it's just. But but I'll say this: <laughs> I'll, I'll guarantee you that Shimano Dave Pfeiffer came up with that Colt sniper. Yeah. Okay. Just for this occasion that we haven't seen in in more than 10 or 12 years. You know that that Colt sniper was it made. Change everything. It's gonna. It, trust me. The, yeah. the, the Colt sniper does get bit too, and uh, those big bluefin will eat the heck out of those anchovies, and they're great to have as chum. But, yeah, I think the last thing you want to do is slide on a spot of 150-pounders, and you go up and you pin that anchovy on, collar hook it on a number four hook, and 25-pound is not something that I don't want to see. Yeah, it's not conducive. <laughs> All right. I do love seeing the anchovies, though. Yeah, we do. Tom, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's jump back in. Let's it. do it. Let's talk to Tim. Tim Cohn from uh, Long Beach. Thanks for joining us this morning on Let's Talk Hookup, Tim. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks uh, for taking my call. But anyways, before I get to my question, I got to tell you, thank God for rain gear when it comes to Humboldt squid because, man, those things really <laughs> blast the heck out of you. Yeah. Uh, Face shields. Uh, but, but yeah, with uh, so many different hook options out there, what uh, when it comes to bluefin, what kind of assortment do you want to see come on the boat? 
You know, with the, um, a lot of the circle hooks now, I just J hooks. Some people still are big fans of them, and if you fish them right, you can usually get them to, to stick in the corner of the mouth. But my go-to, uh, and there's great um, hooks by every maker, whether it's Kamigatsu owner or um, Mustad. I, I, they have you know some of the circle hooks now, especially with smaller baits, are strong enough to where you can fish a light enough uh, hook to where the, the bait can still swim it. But um, I, I, any of those small circle hooks um, with some of the bigger fish lately, some of the triple X strong, the quad quad stronger, something you would want to have in your in your assortment. You know, if you're fishing hundred pound and you have a little bit smaller bait, but those big bluefin are willing to eat it, some of the triple X and the the quad X hooks are something you want to have in your arsenal, just because they will occasionally break and they will occasionally straighten out, depending on what kind of hook you're fishing. But cir- circle hooks, uh, at least in my opinion, with that bluefin is a must. Yeah, for sure. Hey, thanks a lot uh, for the call this morning. Uh, pardon me? Oh, I was going to ask, what about size range? Um, the they, they, same deal. Uh, depending on the, the brand of hook, anywhere from probably a number two right now on, on up to like a two odd is something you want to have for most of the sardines. But you do want to have some bigger ones just in case, you know, there's a mackerel in the tank or hopefully we see it again, you know, some squid mixed in. But uh, bring hooks on up to like a, like probably a five odd for your your general assortment. So anywhere from like a, a two or um, for, we're talking for a bluefin. But me uh, in general, I bring hook size anywhere from four on up to a five odd on on these trips, just so you're you're covering all your bases. Cool. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Uh, a nice text uh, from Brian Wilson in San Clemente. Um, you know, he's, I guess he's off the Beach Boys, and now he's uh, he's fishing, right? right? Exactly. So, uh, hey, um, I, he wants to know what knots you use for spectra to fluorocarbon. Uh, do you use the RP knot, the Tony Pena knot, um, and what's the heaviest line size for an application when you join uh, those? Uh, you know, the, the actually both RP and the Tony Pena are. are um, big fans of mine you so like them both yeah. yeah it just depends on how how much of a hurry you're in and what size line you're tying but once you start getting up anywhere over 100 pound it starts becoming an issue just going through your rollers or your rod tip so um that's when you start looking into doing a different splice or uh you know a crimp connection um i i've done it up to 130 pound and it, it just depends i mean it ends up being a rather large knot, and it, it if it goes through your guides properly, it still works. But you know, anything above 130 pound, you're looking at, you know, doing a, either a, a, a leader with a, a swivel connection or some kind of a crimp or a splice. Yeah, and Kaylee in in Chula Vista had the same question there, uh, and 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 it's a new newbie fisherman, um, so 80. Uh, Spectra to mono eighty the the, the RP knot I like the RP yeah that, no, yeah. No, it's it's still fine. or the John at, Collins knot whatever you want to call yeah. it yeah yeah <laughs> at at eighty pound it's usually fine it's just like I said it, especially a lot of the roller Start guys have gotten it. bigger and bigger and you know yeah. to accommodate you know a lot of what we're doing but there, there's nothing worse than going to cast or something and realizing that your connection doesn't go through your tip yeah. and an RP <laughs> knot so easy it yes, really is so I mean I use a in a exclusively really yeah. whether i'm el salto or inshore here and yeah is it the youtube channel or yeah, or how, yeah. how does well, kaylee talk, find that let, let's talk hook up uh youtube channel we have john collins tying the, the man john, showing you how to tie the john collins knot um it's a, super it's easy the smaller yeah. diameter connections too yeah so what about to the hook what do you use oh uh, man i'm still pretty old-fashioned with the san diego san diego uh, uh, double john. san diego if you're um, if you're, you know, really trying to get your hundred percent or close yeah. to it, um, there, there's a couple of different connections, but there's another springer knot. Do you like the springer knot? I mean, oh, I know we have that on our YouTube channel too, tied by Which John. The That's knot? a really low profile, um, knot. it's a, it's two through the eye. Um, very small knot. I'm, I'm yeah. a San Diego knot yeah, guy too. I mean, that's, knot, not that's all I grew yeah. up with that. It's so easy. I to grew tie. up with it. You yeah. Know? And, and it's and the good thing about the San Diego knot is it's hard to make a mistake with it, right? Which if you look good. at it and you and, and it looks right, it's right. The same right? thing with a double San Diego. As yeah. long as those two legs aren't crossed at the bottom, you're good to go. And yeah. it, it is really easy. Like On the trilane line, knot, sometimes you can really mess that up. It's a great knot, but if you get those things crossed... No, it's, it's the same thing with, with a Palomar. I mean, if you yeah. want to show somebody a quick, easy way to tie a knot... 
But if those two uh, legs are crossing the eye of the hook, it you you're know, done. You're, yeah. you're looking at a sixty percent knot, not a ninety percent. And knot. you won't yeah. know until you put yeah. pressure on it with a fish. Yeah, you got to yeah. really cinch it down to find out if it's no, going to roll you. over or not. <laughs> yeah, let's jump back on the phone. Let's do it, Chuck. Chuck from Dana Point. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup, Chuck. Good morning. Hey you guys. Hey, good morning. You got me frothing at the mouth, man. You right. Know, uh, back in the elbow court days with the um, anchovies, we used to use beak hooks. And uh, that was before circle hooks and stuff. But I hardly ever see a, a need for um, a J hook anymore with these bluefin and stuff like that. But, you know, here's a, a problem I see coming up. Your fish hold. What happens you get a 400-pounder? Will it fit in that thing <laughs> through the opening? Um, You're going to have to get so a So far, opening. we haven't maxed it out. When, when I redid my fish hold, uh, was it four years ago? Uh, we didn't think we were yeah. going to catch 400 pounders, but uh, our big fish last year was three three thirteen, and it went in with and no went problem. In. Yeah, I know some of the uh, smaller oh, boats cool. have started carrying uh, fish bags, and even having to cut their fish up to put them in it. And we Whew. we we have a uh, uh, 16 ton fish hold. We have a really big fish hold, but as far as uh, Hopefully we don't have to make our entrances bigger. I, I don't want to start seeing 400 pounders. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it could happen this year, though. That fish has been growing <laughs> it's, up. It's, it's gonna, yeah, but I, if those start biting in numbers, I think a lot of boats are going to have to change change things like, around. Watch out. Once they're in the fish hold, yep. it's fine. It's getting them back out of the fish hold. Oh, yeah. You know, 300 pounders are, you know, you get two or three guys on them, and it's not the worst thing. But we start seeing bluefin around 500 pounds. We're going to start putting cranes on our boat. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Hey, thanks a lot for the call, Chuck. Uh, a quick text here about the tribute features. Uh, do you have food options, showers on boards? Can they reserve a bump? And, and that's from Cliff and Blossom Valley. Uh, all those kind of little features are nice uh, to know. Yes, on on. On all of them. Um, I was same cook for years here. Uh, Daniel Wharf um, does a great job. He also has his own catering business. Um, meals like on this last trip, you can do a meal package. Um, they're uh, now forty five to fifty dollars for a day and a half trip. Uh, covers which your, isn't a bad deal. Well, that's no, all and, your meals, and you got to uh, yeah think about what's going on with our economy and how yeah. expensive oh, everything expensive is getting. Food so is fifty yeah. bucks on a day and a half trip covers your breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, Crazy. hors d'oeuvres. Um, breakfast could be a lot of people just you know get on a boat and the first thing they want is a breakfast burrito so that oh it's an option you can do it anywhere from that to a breakfast plate um, our mid morning snack yesterday was uh, a breakfast cake and uh, cantaloupe and um, honeydew melon oh nice uh, lunch could be the same thing ninety um, percent of your guys that come out on an overnight to two day trip want a boat burger so. I, I, I think we did 30 burgers yesterday, maybe a couple of sand, sandwiches with it. Uh, afternoon snack was like a Mexican platter with uh, taquitos and stuff. Oh. And then dinner last night was tri-tip, um, sides, and dessert. So it's it's well put together. It's, so you can reserve a bunk, and, and you do have showers. You can you can call and reserve a bunk in advance. And then you do you the need to bring your own sleeping bag pillow? Uh, we, we do have pillows on the boat. Um, we do go through and fog. Uh, we use a commercial-grade fogger in between every trip. Um, a hospital grade disinfectant. We have cover, vinyl covers on our pillows. We spray everything. So all you need to do is bring a pillow case and um, a, a sleeping bag or blanket. Okay. Oh, that's uh, simple enough. Yeah. So I we we I know a lot of guys got rid of their pillows, but we still have them. Um, yeah. And then yeah, you can call and reserve your bunk and showers. Yes, we do have full enclosed showers inside of our heads. Very nice. sweet. All right, good times. We're going to be right back. It's Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and a mightier 1090. Rock Cod Rick here to tell you about Parker Boats and the guys at West Coast Marine. By now, you all know my boat partner and I bought a new 25 Parker Center console from Kevin Kelly and the crew at West Coast Marine in Costa Mesa. We've known for a long time that a Parker was the boat for us. It's a stout, workhorse of a boat built to last and get you home when the seas get rough. Parker Boats at the launch ramp, the offshore tuna grounds. You wake up in the morning on an overnight trip and there they are. Parker boats of all sizes fishing in the same areas as the sporties. There's a good reason for it. Fishability and seaworthiness. West Coast Marine has several new Parkers in stock and ready for delivery. A 2520 XLD pilot house with a $25,000 discount, a 2510 walk around with a $23,000 discount, and a 2320 pilot house with a $15,000 discount, and they have more on the way. Don't get caught without a reliable boat when fishing is this good. Take it from me, if you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, and honest deal, you need to see Kevin Kelly at West Coast Marine. Check out the inventory and information at westcoastmarine.com. 
When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. A tough fleet and superb fishing is what Seaforth Sport Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, it's no wonder Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, El Gato Dos, Pride, Tribute Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth, Sea Watch, and San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or regular open parties, schedule check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. Hookup! Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Fun two hours with... Uh, wow, Mike. Yeah, I know. And I know. It's so cool. Yeah. One lucky winner, though. One lucky winner is Darren. Darren from Menifee. He's got his uh, opportunity to ride a day and a half trip on the yep. Tribute uh, through the month of June. Yeah. So we'll make sure we months. get you connected with Marcos over at C4 Sport Fishing, and Marcos will set you up on that trip. And, uh, boy, Mike, uh, what's the schedule for the Tribute here coming up? <clears throat> uh, right now we have a day and a half schedule. Uh, Printed through the end of July. Uh, we do uh, have one-day trips departing Thursday night uh, to fill in the, uh, the gap there. And there, it looks like there's going to be some pretty good fishing here in one-day range uh, very shortly. A really nice great yellowtail. Um, great, great a bluefin when they decide to cooperate. But I would um, start looking for that stuff to push a little bit closer and, and start seeing some better numbers. Um, hopefully our weather straightens itself out. It's uh, been quite the roller coaster here lately. Yeah. Um, but now, whether uh, it's going to be myself or uh, Captain Buzz Brizendine or Tyler Fry is running the boat, um, great, you know, still a great group of guys uh, crew-wise. Uh, come on out, jump on one of these day-and-a-half trips. And uh, we're Friday nights ago, and I do have to say that we have picked up just an awesome sponsor here lately with a local company, uh, Pizza Port. Uh, who's going to be doing uh, lots of uh, trips with us, supplying some pizza on the departure night. Oh, nice. As well as uh, some kick down, some good uh, beer deals throughout the trip. Oh, so wow. How cool is we, that? We are going to be making a Friday night's trip, which I think is full or close to it. I, there might be a few spots left, but yeah. uh, Friday night's trip is a go. It's going to be sponsored by Pete Support. Um, you can book 619-224-3383, seaforthlanding.com, uh, of course, tribute sportfishing.com, and take a look at our uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram pages, too. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Mike, it was a great show, and a lot of great questions from our listeners and a lot of great texts from our listeners, and uh been great to have you this week, Corey. Thank you fun. very much. Yeah. Look, great, to ha- great to have I'm you. I'm always thankful for the opportunity. Yeah, and, and, and we're thankful that you're able to come and join us here, and uh, uh, and we look forward to get some bass fishing in We'll here. call it good times. Yeah, good times for sure. All right, Mike, thanks again for coming in, and thanks Always. for the day-and-a-half trip, and thank you out there. Thanks to Andrew for Man manning and the phones and manning the board, and thanks to Adam for all he does on the Let's Talk Hookup app. Next Saturday, Captain Mark Wish from Pacific Edge will be here. We'll be talking sea bass, yellowtail, bait tanks, and more with Captain Mark, our private boater buddy there. And then next Sunday, Captain and Ryan Bostian from the San Diego. Mr. Yellowtail himself will be here to give the inside scoop on that Coronado Islands Yellowtail. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you next weekend right back here on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090.